Sorry, I got a tweet about this because I'm still getting used to the tweeting. Um, not very good at it yet. Um, all right. So all that's out of the way. Um, so we should be able to start now. Um, and hopefully, ah, freaking, ah, of course. Maya, and then pull up. I don't have an ad for freaking Terminator Genesis the entire time. So, let's see, make sure that that's streaming. Okay, looks like everything's going all right now. Um, so, and if anyone comes in, uh, feel free to say hi in the comments. Um, and uh, let me know if you can't hear anything or if there's some problem with my microphone and or the actual windows or anything like that. Uh, I am still messing with the setup, so I do not know what works best yet. Um, so, that's going to be a fun thing to try and figure out, I guess. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I think the big thing we're going to do today is we're going to start work on the uh, caves level. Um, so the caves level is going to be sort of a hub area for the latter part of the game, where the first half of the game takes place above ground. The last half of the game actually takes place below ground. Um, so there is going to be a couple of key places that you go to, including uh, an underground lake, uh, a underground magma river, and a underground labyrinth. Um, well, I keep saying underground for everything, but, um, so we need a central place that you can get to all of those areas from, and that is what we're going to be doing today. Um, so we have a couple of things to take into account here. So we need at least four entrances, actually five, um, one for each of the three levels, um, that happen in the latter half of the game, as well as a, another path for... Uh, coming from the surface, so the place that actually leads into this hub area. And then the fifth uh, path is the final path that leads to the Undercastle, which is uh, the last level of the game. And it is what all of the puzzle solving and treasure hunting will lead up to, uh, because this is where the actual Lost Kingdom comes into into play. Um, but we won't get to that today, obviously, because we have to model out uh, you know, the, hub area, the hub area first. So, um, I'm going to start with the cube, because it's modeling. Uh, I mean, I do model in Maya. Um, so any Max users or Blender users, you can feel free to shout at me, I guess. Um, let's go ahead and we'll rename that. Eh, I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. But I will position it so that it's zero. Uh, let's see. So, actually, you know what? I want to start with a cube. Uh, maybe I want to start with... Also, I want to get my... I always forget outline. Or, uh, Oh, this is going to be fun. Um, I really need to get a second monitor so I can have this outliner and all these extra menus open in an area that's not going to affect visual development. <laughs> but I do not have the finances for a good second monitor yet. Um, or really a good first monitor. <laughs> so we'll just kind of wing it. Um, so actually, instead of a cube, let's go with... Do I have a... There we go, cylinder. All right. So, uh, oof. I'll put the art learner down here at the bottom right. Um, that way I can still see any chat messages that won't come in. <laughs> um, so let's call this um, Caves Center. Zero it out. And then let's go to its properties. Uh, one more over. Um, let's see here. So, uh, we don't want it to be that smooth, um, because for Text Quest, I don't like having rounded edges. Uh, rounded edges make it very difficult to actually read uh, the words on the textures. So, this is too round, too smooth. Um, let's chop that down to 8, might be a bit heavy. Um, eh, not bad. Um, probably could get away with that, actually. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I like it. Uh, all right, so we have that, and then let's rotate it. Uh, it's going to rotate in the Y. I think it's going to be like 22.5. Um, that should be right, so just to make sure. Let's go up here to the top, make sure that we don't get any aliasing. Okay, yeah, 
So it's 22.5 degrees, I think, to rotate a octagon um, so that it's facing the right way. So with that, we now have a properly rotated, ah, disoriented, a properly rotated octagon. Um, so we will have, da, 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 let's extend, edit mesh, base, extrude it. Let's just get that out here. Actually, extrude all of these four or these four paths. Um, I think they're going to form the basis for the pathway. Actually, you know, do I want to do that, or do I want to just have the center be its own thing? Um, Part of what I would like to do for this is actually have um, the paths themselves be arches, um, so that you can see underneath them. I don't want them to be solid squares, basically. Um, so actually, what I'm going to do here, I'm also going to change this so it's radius is uh, 5. That's pretty nice. Um, actually, to give it a sense of scale, um, Make it 15. So this will be a pretty pretty large area. Um, and of course, the nice thing about bringing it into to Unity is, um, as long as you have the proportions correct, you can always scale the model. Um, because when you import these into Unity, they're super small. Um, I think that's because they get exported as centimeters from Maya, and I could fix that. But um, it's always nice to have that option to be able to scale it by like 200%, um, or I guess it would actually be like 200,000% because it's units, but um, as long as everything looks proportionally right, you can always scale it to make it uh, the actual physical size that you want it to be. Um, so we're going to go for 15 meters wide, um, that's how long I want this central hub to be, um, we have the height of let's say 30, because um, this is going to be big! Um, it. So then it's actually at negative 15, so that way it is right at the ground level. Um, da, 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 da. And that actually should probably be good for that. Um, yeah, anything else? Da, da, da. I should stop moving this. It's probably going to make people sick if they watch this. <laughs> I just have this tendency to grab things and move it while I'm thinking. Um, uh, we'll we'll leave that as is. Um, I guess I could export it real quick and just look at it in Unity, but eh, um, eh, you know what? Why not? Go ahead and pull that in. Let's uh, export selection. Just call it caves.fbx. Um, you know, I just want to you do this to get a sense of scale. Um, Let's open up Unity. All this stuff up. Navigate to Component. Unity. Text Quest. Art. Models. Because I love nested folders. Alright. Let's open up Text Quest. I'm just going to quickly drag this in and then run around on top of it, see how it looks. Um, I don't think it'll... I think that'll look pretty nice, actually. It's just... I mean, it's just an octagon. Octahedron. I actually don't know what the uh, official term for an eight-sided polygon thing is. Um, it would just be octagon. Uh, okay, so that's the sewers level. I don't need that. Scenes... Uh, underground Kingdom... Caves... Caves. Um, so do I have anything? Uh, that's probably fine. Um, still, though, I'm going to turn that off just in case, because there's the very real possibility that there's some script that's just going to kick me out as soon as I boot that up. Um, all right, so let's go to Models, Levels, uh, Underground, we got a labyrinth in there, so let's create Caves. All right, let's go this up. Um, I need to pull an animation. Uh, 
I think generally I scale it 200 times because it gets set to be super small. That's oh wow, that's uh, <laughs> that's really big. Um, yeah, probably don't need it to be that big, but uh, real quick, let me throw in some light, uh, some directional lighting, and throw in a prefab, which is going to be my player. Um, let's turn this off. Let's see how this works. Oh, crap, I forgot to put... Yep, I'm just going to fall because I forgot to put a uh, mesh filter or a mesh collider on it. Mesh collider. Alright, let's try that again. Not bad. It's a little hard to get a sense of scale. Um, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to cheat and grab a random texture. Um, why are there two canyons? Okay, well, we're just going to use the canyon cave for now because that'll be similar to what the actual... Have. And that's, <laughs> that's going to be terrible. Um, so I'm just going to tile this real quick to be like 20 by 20. Oh, not 20, 20. Um, oh, really? No, I'm not hitting tab. I was hitting tilde. Really, though, the UV doesn't want to. Eh. Um, so I can't like do 50. Weird. Huh. It's not actually tiling. Okay. Well, I mean, I just want to see what it looks like. Um, okay. That did not help me any. Uh, let's just find a random one. Dirt. I have a lot of dirt textures. Man, I gotta get through some of this stuff because this is. I have a lot of duplicate textures. <laughs> eh. Well, that's good to know at least. Um, let's pop this in. Let's do one more thing. Let's slide this smoothness down. I don't want that reflection happening. Okay. Eh, 15 might be a bit too big. Eh, let's scale that down to 10. Um, just because. You shouldn't really have to sprint too much to get across this thing. So if this is one edge, it's going to take me. I can't even really tell. But I don't know. That was quite a few seconds. So um, yeah, it's too big. All right. So let's minimize that. Let's go back here. Let's change you to be radius of 10. Oops. 10. Save that. Let's export selection again. Do all that stuff. Alright. This. Next text class. Build. Text class. Assets. Text class. Models. Levels. Underground. Caves. Alright. I'm just going to drag this model in here and replace the old one. So this will be fun. I don't actually know if it's going to take place right away or not. Ah, probably not. Um, let's... Ah, I forgot to do it again. Mesh collider. Yeah, I like that a little bit more. Nice. It's it's big enough that you can get a sense of scale. Um, it'll feel feel pretty good. Um, it's a little flat right now. Uh, the textures will help with the sense of scale a little bit later, um, but we'll also be adding in stalagmites and stalactites um, as we go further on in the level. Uh, I just want to get a sense for the actual layout of the ground right now. Um, yeah, I like that. Ten, I think, works pretty well. Um, okay, so let's save that. Minimize. Go back here. All right, so we have our center. Um, actually, let me see if that's... I'm going to jump off the edge here. See what happens. How... Yes, that's, that's good. Um, although, I might actually cheat a little bit and make its height 45. Um, which means this is going to be a 
odd number. Um, it'd be like what negative twenty two point five, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I just do that because I want it to fall. I want you to uh, fall quite a bit before you die if you fall off the edge uh, in the caves, because uh, it's meant to imply that it is really far down. Um, so with that, we can get rid of these. Make sure that that's not selected. Okay, and delete. Okay, so that's our center. Um, just fairly basic. Don't have too much advanced geometry going on there, um, which is how most of the modeling gets done in this. So let's save that. Da -da. Um, next thing we can start on. Let's try. I actually don't remember if there's a preset for. There probably isn't. Um, let's just try a couple of different shapes for the uh, actual uh, arches. Uh, so let's zero that on. So how about the X? Um, Call this entry arch. So move that out here. And let's see. So it's going to probably be what's our width? Five. And a little bit more than that. Probably looking at. Probably looking at. Seven and seven point five. Okay, um, so that's going to be oh. so seven point five is the width of our paths. Although we probably would actually want them to taper a bit. Um, whew, tapering, great, just what I love. Um, mm, 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 mm. Um, but for now. Let's actually just move you over here. Let's set your height to be uh, 30. Um, and your depth to be uh, 15. Um, so I want our paths to be a little bit longer than the width of our center hub area. Um, actually, that would be 15. Oh, crap. Negative 15. Um, and it's not going to go quite as far down, because, like I said, we're probably going to end up tapering um, a bit, and it's going to be an arch. It's not going to be an actual, like, square. Um, so we can go back here. We can do subdivisions width. Three. Oh, actually, no, we don't. No, that should probably be five, um, just so that we can mess around with it a bit. Um, subdivision height. Let's try five again. I might cheat a little bit and let that get rounded out a little bit, since you'll never actually be able to walk up to it. So, um, but I won't go too crazy with it. Subdivision's depth. Five. That. Yeah, five. Eh, no, we'll go seven, actually. Um, we'll go seven here. And let's select this to seven. I think that'll work pretty well. Um, the big thing that I like to do is I try to have this... Uh, well, I try to do curves with um, triangles, which is basically why I use octagons instead of circles. Um, but it's kind of hard when you want to do uneven edging. So I might... I'm going to finagle with these lines a bit. Say negative two point five. I think we'll put you in positive two point five, and then let's get you to be right there. And let's go negative one point seven five versus positive one point seven five, and I'm thinking I'm going to have things come in uh, basically along these vertices. That'll be the edge that things happen on. Oh, it's 
except actually I might do let's do that. So it tapers as you get closer, but the actual coming since you're gonna be coming out of a of a hole in the wall basically, um there's no real need for it to taper that way. Um Yeah, we'll give that a try and see how that looks. Um, so all we really need is to do that and then mesh. Uh, where is it? Save mesh. Connect components. Mesh. Connect components. So we can have that nice taper there. Um, and here's the fun part where all of the UVs and crap is going to be messed up. The edging might not work anymore either. Um, actually... So before I do all those things, I'm going to finish moving the edges around. That way I make sure that they don't mess up anything. Um, actually kind of like that. Um, these actually might be fine. I might not need to do much here. Um, yeah, actually I probably don't need to do much there. Um, See here, let me sort of load this in vertex mode. So again, here, here. We'll probably just sort of slowly get these closer and closer to that. Um, yeah, I think we can do that. Um, so actually, um, but, 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 And, of course, chat went off to the side, so I can't see it. Um, ah, that's because it's... Okay, there we go. Uh, hmm. What are we going to do here? So, we got that. 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 And that, that, that. Um, we'll probably have to sync some of this stuff in. So... Let's go ahead and start deleting faces that we don't need. Um, so it's going to be these, these, those, definitely. Um, that didn't, okay, good. Um, okay. And definitely going to be, don't need those. Crazy about this. Um, no, wrong thing. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, I might just get rid of, let's get rid of these. Um, get rid of these. There's no real need to have them go down that far, I guess. And I got a couple of stragglers. Um, so let's just try it with an arch. That's that deep. Um, all right. Um, so, go to object mode. Um, and then channels. There's great layer from selected. Uh, pull the center. Save. And we're on toggle button. That way I can see all this stuff. Um, don't need any of these faces. All right, so that should be good. Let's go to edge, these, bridge, these, bridge, bridge these. Let's select the other one, right? Yeah, I've done a couple of times where I'll select an edge in Maya and it will be the wrong edge, but it looks correct because of the perspective. Um, and then when I bridge, everything just gets completely messed up. <laughs> which is not fun, um, especially if you don't notice it, because then you'll finish modeling after like two hours of saving, and then you, just your entire setup is uh, going to have to almost go out the window, because you did a wrong bridge a long time ago. Um, that and... That and... Bam. 
So there is our archway for now. We can toggle visibility back onto the center. Um, and we'll get rid of these edge faces once we're done. Um, so that's that. Oh, you know what? I probably actually wanted to have one more for smoother. Ah, uh, oh well. Um, so let's do vertex. I don't remember if this is going to, like, no, oh, no, it doesn't. Okay. I wasn't sure if they were if it was smart enough to just not bother with it. But connect components, just to be safe, actually. Okay, that's nice. Um, I'm always sort of. I'm never sure if I'm actually doing the right thing or if I just did something that I think is right and it's going to completely screw me later because um, that is entirely possible that it's going to happen very often because I'm still new to modeling in Maya um, and a lot of stuff can just get you. So, get rid of these faces, get rid of these faces, get rid of these faces. Eh, that was a lot of bridging I didn't need to do. Um, and that's what I'm talking about by not being careful. Um, that. There we go. Um, all right. So now that we have that, we can actually do. Let's talk the center off again. Let's do some edge work. Oh no! I can see. Ah, uh, that probably means that there's something wrong with my. Well, it could just mean that there. Let's see, do I have one? Yeah. Oh, that's probably why. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter since I'm going to get rid of these faces anyway. Might as well just go ahead and do that actually. that. Alright. So now that we have that, if I did it on the wrong side. Of course I did. Um, that, then. That. Okay. Get rid of this again. Okay. So now we don't have to worry about that stuff. Um, so let's get it. Edge, edge work going again. Let's get these two things bridged. Get those bridged. These are all nice. Um, so that's something that can happen too when you're bridging. Um, sometimes the bridges can get turned around so the UVs are, or the normals are pointing the wrong way. Um, and if that's the case, you'll just see black instead of this uh, sort of semi specular uh, material. So let's get these and let's kill them out a bit. Admittedly, this. Uh, Normally this drives me crazy um, if I can't manually specify how much I want to scale these things, but well, it's the world we live in, I suppose. Um, let's get these and scale them out a little bit further. Um, maybe bring them in actually a bit. Um, so let's do that. Oh, and actually, you know what? Um, let's do face. That way we can get a nice. Actually, with that, let's go ahead and select these again. Move them up. Move these way up as well. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Got a nice edge going on. The, the topology is hideous, but eh, it doesn't look that bad. Um, Apology does, but the actual model looks fine. Um, so yeah, if we look at it outside of object mode, um, we do get some very hard edges, but at the same time, they are still soft enough that it's not really going to make much of a difference, and um, 
these will, again, not really be seen um, in gameplay because the player is not going to be able to look underneath these things. Um, but let's go back here and toggle on our center area. Um, so we got that. Yeah, I kind of like that. Um, that. Let's do a quick um, duplicate of that. So we're looking at 16.75, right? Uh, new. Let's go up here so that we're looking at it from above. Yeah, there is still some. We're looking at 16.5. If I can do it. No. 16.6, 16.7. Sixteen point two five. Oh wait, no. Sixteen point seven two five. Really? Fine. Let's just no. let's try seven three seven four. Okay, that's a really weird number. Um, except that is still not correct. Um, so let's try. Seven five, and I do a uh, seven five, which is it would actually be worse. Um, really, I do a lot of this sort of overlap stuff, and the problem is that if you're not careful um, with text textures, um, even a minor overlap like that will actually lead to a huge problem um, down the line, where. Oh, and Jesus, I completely screwed up the width here. Ah, of course I did. Um, oh, well, I'll fix that a little bit later. Um, so even the slightest overlap can really just mess with you. Um, so I can't do like 8.5? It'll just, it rounds. Oh, man, why does it round? Um, I bet it's got something to do with snapping. Oh, of course it does. So, hmm. Well, for now, I guess it's fine. Um, probably go into preferences and change that. Um, but I really just want to get a sense of scale, so I will save. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try something that I normally don't like to do, which is go way back to my history and try and widen my... Uh, stuff quite a bit. Polycube. Set its width to be. Okay, that's not terrible. Um, didn't just utterly break it. Um, maybe 7.5. It's a bit too much. Yeah. So. Six five. Okay. Really? It's still a little too much. And I can be totally obsessive when it comes to these things, so it's a terrible, terrible curse. Um, but it works great for the text textures because. Oh man, those things have to line up perfectly, otherwise people just go crazy. Um, or maybe that'll just be me. Um, okay, so actually let me go back to that. Let's get rid of you. Um, now let's duplicate you again. Go back to your shape. Let's zero you out. Actually, that's going to be... Uh, ha -ha. 16.738. Oh, right. That's not what we want. We want that to be zero. Actually, we want that to be negative 15. Um, 
I want you to be 16.738. And then you to be 0. And rotation to be 90. Ta-da! So now we have that. Um, I don't know if the second arch... I don't know if any of these arches are actually going to be the same model-wise. I might try to make them a little more varied. Um, but for now... I think that's pretty good. Um, we'll go ahead and pull this out of Maya. Um, actually, let's group these together under the caves. Okay. Save that. Then export selection. Oh, all right. I forgot a yeah okay yeah when I when you drag files between folders um, you got to hold down control when you're hovering over the folder you're dropping into otherwise you'll actually just move the folder or the file over there instead of just copying it um, I forget to do that sometimes so this is gonna be fun 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 like this over here so I've copied the caves replace file and destination let's open this up. Uh, Right. That's okay. Well, let's delete that and just drag in the caves. Um, it's a little bit easier to. Yeah. Okay. So, all these, let's get some mesh colliders. Uh, So, yeah, see what I was talking about about it. Yeah, it's not terrible. It's kind of kind of hard to judge, admittedly, um, with blue space um, as opposed to an actual like cave wall. Um, along with actually, Let me turn on some fog because there will be fog. Um, so it's going to be darkness, so it's going to be black. Um, so I play this now. Let's see how. I actually don't know if that's going to show right or not. I don't think it will. Um, like point one. Yeah, point one is what we need. Because um, I want I want the darkness to actually have like a very strong. Not that strong. 0.05. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Um, in some of these darker underground areas, oh, and I fell off. Um, you want the uh, darkness to feel like it's always encroaching on you, um, and that that is to help sort of push the the light dark mechanic that's built into Text Quest. Um, all right. Let's 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 bump it to point oh two five. Um, that's that's not very. Uh, so I always want to make sure that the player feels like uh, they need to have their lantern ready um, in case they have to go into these dark areas. And since you're underground for the latter half of the game, you know some areas are are very dark, like the labyrinth, and other areas are are a lot lighter, like the. Uh, the Magma River, which is, for obvious reasons, very, um, very, uh, light. I'll give you a hint, it's because of the magma. Um, okay, let's try 0 0.05. Do we try that? 0 0.05. Not bad. Let's do 0.075. Um, that's a little bit. Well, then again, actually, you know what? I probably should make this, like, 0.01, like it was originally. Um, I just want it to affect the outer edges for this area, because the hub area is meant to be light, or lit, um, somewhat. That way you can have this nice uh, visual when you come in. Um, you'll be able to see light coming from the ceiling, and uh, you'll immediately be able to see the paths of the light before you. Um, 
But that's for once we get all this actually done. Um, so for now, let's go back to Maya. Um, yeah, I like the... Uh, I like these arches. I might just be lazy for now and uh, duplicate them. So that... Let's call this one... Uh, Terra Lacus Arch, because I got fancy with Latin, um, and I probably spelled Lacus wrong here. Um, let's duplicate you. Call you... Magma River Arch. Um, and we're also going to move you so that you are negative 16. And then finally we are going to go with So we have this four arch system going on, which eh, I don't know if I like that or not, actually. Um, it's a little too uniform. Um, hmm. But we might be able to get away with this by how we handle the actual entryways. Um, and of course, something I completely forgot to do. Um, let's insert edge loop, which actually is, uh, here we go. Except for that was completely not, um, okay, let's go to edge, up oh, and crap, there, okay, let's go over to edge, um, um, I actually completely forgot if, well, I won't worry about it for now. Um, I want to stick a, uh, sort of C a, well, that's not going to be secret. The access to the undercastle is going to be in the center here after you have collected, um, uh, three different objects from the main three areas down here, and you will use that to unlock the route to the actual undercastle. Um, and I think that's going to be in the form of a sort of elevator that comes, that just drops down, basically. Um, <laughs> but, to get away, well, actually, hmm, I could make the entire central, or center area a, uh, a hub area, or a uh, elevator. That interesting. Might be a little weird though, because you'd have the entire center come down. Oh, but then again, actually. Oh, I like that actually. Um, that way, instead of having these arches be attached to this sort of center pillar, um, there actually wouldn't be a, a pillar here. It would just be the arches sort of connecting above nothingness. Um, and then we could have a rune or a magic circle or something that pops up here. Um, and that'll be what actually moves you to the undercastle. That might be interesting. That'd be, that'd be a lot more visually interesting because you would just see the flat horizontal plane that is your walkable area and then nothing above and nothing below. Um, I kind of like that a lot, actually. Let's move this stuff. Um, if that's the case, we can actually... Get rid of try that, that, that. Move these. Yeah, I think we could use that. Let's go to edge. in a little bit. Although, actually, I kind of like having that bulge out a bit down here. And I can't do it too much, though. Um, oh, 
so that it is an ingon. Um, I actually know it wouldn't be. That would just be a polygon. Um, still. A, So that way we don't have any sort of odd shapes going on. Um, I say is the topology is just terrible. Um, all right, and then I also got to get rid of these, which I completely forgot about. Get these going. Let's go create our edit mesh connect components. Okay, so that turned out pretty nice. Um, now let's start. Oh, Oof. that's that's not great. Um, yeah, the edge loops don't extend to the bottom, which makes it it's going to make it very difficult to uh, actually properly sort of taper this stuff. Um, ah, great. Um, Actually, you know what? Maybe I can cheat. So let's pull. Let's just delete these. And then these will all just move. Oh. Uh, oh, right. I don't need that. What's the thing to send? Negative one point seven five. Okay, so those are all lining up nicely now. Um, Ah, uh, really? Of course. Negative 1.8. Yeah, of course. Negative 1.775. Okay. 1.76. Ah, negative 1.77. I'm going to kill someone. Um, so, let's see. Negative 1.765. There we go. Um, and then I'll have to merge those. Um, so that actually should take care of the taper problem. Um, at least a little bit. Um, so let's do vertex highlight. So it says I have two selected there, and that's because I do. Edit mesh, merge components. Now I only have got the one. Um, so that, edit mesh, merge components. Add a mesh, merge components. This, add a mesh, merge components. Add a mesh, merge components again. And then add a mesh. Make sure it's not that. Uh, merge components. Okay. So that's that. Um, let's see where that is. That's at negative 2.546. Five, four, six. All right. Except uh, I need to do it with both of these. Five, four, six. Okay. So now we need the mesh merge components. Um, so now we got the taper going on here. No, if I want to get rid of get rid of this defining line. 
think I do. Well, eh. I'm sure that's entertaining that I make terrible, terrible grunting noises whenever I work. That looks pretty nice, actually. Uh, I might cheat and have these. Um, yeah, cheat a little bit. So that sets the negative 1.6. Let's go negative 1.5. Oh, what? Okay, that's weird. Negative 1.5. What are you at then? Oh, what the heck? Why are you in such a strange spot? That's really weird. Okay, so, great, now I have to do math. Um, no, actually, I should not have to do math. What the hell? Oh, that's why. Okay, yeah. Oh, I need to actually move this stuff in first. Um, if I'm an idiot. Get rid of these. Delete. Alright, so now we should be able to do the same thing over here. that one. Except I completely forgot what the negative 1.765. Which will make this 1.765. Alright. I think the vertex was at 2.565. 2.56. Or was it 2.546? There we go. So oh, those are all there, all nice and merged together. Um, so let's go through and merge these. Um, edit mesh, merge components, edit mesh, merge components, edit mesh, merge components. That's good. Two, edit mesh, merge components. feel kind of bad, like I feel like I should have music or something going on in the background, but, you know, I have no idea what would be good for people to listen to, um, you know, anything better than just sitting there listening to me go, highlight, merge, highlight, merge, like a robot, um, as exciting as I know I am, um, I'm sure that there are more exciting things that you would all prefer to do, um, so let's see. Let's move that to 1.75, which did not do much. I don't think it did anything, actually. No, it did. Okay, so let's move that to 1.5. Although I'm just kind of like completely screwing over any semblance of nice geometry. Um, that I may have once had. Um, so, edge, now I can move you to be 1.5 and it will make it more symmetrical. Um, go back to vertex. So, all of these look right, but this is giving me some wonky specular stuff, which generally means that I have a component somewhere that it's not supposed to be. Um, make sure I got all these merged. It's not inspired confidence that I... Well, it's not great. I'm just going to scale this in a little bit. Okay. 
Okay. So, the monstrosity works. Um, or at least I think it does. Um, I forget if I can manually specify scale or not. Yeah, that's. That looks pretty nice. Yeah. And again, a lot of this is a lot of this just looks terrible until you actually start putting textures on there. Um, and actually, before we do any of the texturing in here, um, I'm gonna get some stalactites or stalactites or I don't know what to call them. So let's get a pyramid. Because I think pyramids. Are I forget. Is this, I think a stalagmite hangs from the ceiling. Stalactite does not. Um, let me check this out real quick. Because... Right. Stalagmite... Wait. Rises from the floor. So stag, stalagmite comes from the ceiling. A stalactite comes from the... Yep, okay. So stalagmite. It's. I got to make sure I get the right term because I don't want to make a texture for it and then uh, find out that I it was the wrong word. Because um, then you have to retexture everything and make sure the UV map still works and it, it, can, get, it can get pretty messy. Um, so let's let's move you up. Um, let's call you. Sides is fine. Side length three. Oh dear, it's now oh, it's uniformly scaled. Um, boo! I can't set the radius. Um, that's kind of annoying. Um, yeah, I don't want it to be three. <laughs> um, one. I think that's enough, really. Um, well, actually, no, I, I don't want to get rid of the center yet. Um, although I might, because it's getting in the way of my looking at stuff. So I look at the face. Um, I might just scale this in. Scaling options, because I think I can set it. It's been a while. Um, not soft select. I thought I could snap this stuff. Um, ah! Look what happens when you forget how to do very basic things with Maya. Um, so, I can cheat. Well, actually, you no, know I'm just going to. Again, drives me crazy, but there we go. Um. So object mode. Let's go ahead and put you at zero Y. That way I can more accurately let's just zero you up. I can more accurately look at you. So right now it is roughly one meter tall. Um, let's just extend that to be two. So we're going to move you down to negative one. Um, that should be fine. Um, then we go into object mode. Um, I forget what option is to move the transform, the actual, like, pivot. 
Um, I think it's up here. And then I think I can move, pivot, 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 pivot. That's symmetry. Or maybe it's just me being crazy. Um, ugh. Not L. Well, okay. So clearly, I need to relearn my shortcuts because, um, for the life of me, I cannot remember how to do this. So fine, fine. If it's just going to be like that. Um, And again, I'm sure that if anyone watches this further on down the line, they'll just be smacking their heads and trying to kill me because of my own EDSC. Well, I'm not going to worry about it because I cannot remember how to do it. So let's pull you up here. Let's just get you nice. Um, let's move you over here and I'll put you slightly on the edge. Should be fine. Uh, just get a couple of things in there to break it up. Um, create a big group. Um, is that under here? Call it mites. And we're going to come through uh, and probably delete all of these later. Um, but for now, I just want to sort of get a sense of what the level's going to look like with them hanging around, making things look more visually interesting. Um, okay. Symmetry bugs the crap out of me. I mean, I can't do that here. <laughs> okay, um, so those are the caves again. Um, let's go ahead and file, export selection, use caves export, yes, I want to replace it, um, let's go back here, copy it, move to caves, replace the file, put it on unity again, okay, um, then if I... That's a lot nicer. We get a nice, it helps break up things, make it, makes it uh, have a better sense of scale. Uh, actually, probably should have scaled these differently so that it would be a little more interesting. Um, and, but I mean, this was just a quick test. So, yeah, I do like that. Um, okay. So it's been about an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, uh, but before we call it a night, let's actually take care of the interior of the cave. So let's make the um, actual sort of walls that you'll see uh, if you're in here. Um, oh, and I've actually, you know what? let me go back. I want to look at the... Uh, yeah, so this is... Yeah, I like that. It's not too wide, um, where it feels like nothing, or where it feels like you're completely safe, but it's not so narrow that um, people will fall off and die. Um, up oh, and yeah, I, yep, yeah, okay. I forgot to add oh, mesh colliders. Okay, let's try that again. So I can see what that entryway looks like from the side. Yeah, I like that. Oops, clicked off. Um, again, a lot of the again, the textures will really make this place pop. Um, doing this with placeholder textures is kind of terrible, but it's also 
it's not really worth it to have you guys sit through me UVing this stuff. Um, that UV UVing maps is just a a very tedious process for text quest. Um, because I have to go in and make sure all of the UVs line up so that all of the words are readable and they don't have line breaks or anything like that. It's it, it, it can be tedious. Like this this modeling will probably only take me a couple of days, if that, um, but the, the texturing could easily take me a week to make sure that everything looks right. Um, yeah, I kinda like that. Um, I think the fog tends to bounce a lot nicer off of the stalagmites. Um, okay, so let's go back to Maya. So we want to do our main cave section, um, which I'm going to make it a cylinder. Um, zero it out. Um, let's go over to properties. Um, and actually, real quick, I am going to add a new layer. Oh, crap. Get that. Ah! Everything's going wrong. Um, delete layer from selected because I'm lazy. Um, I'm going to call this walls. So these will be all of the walls that the cave is in. That way I can toggle these on and off very easily. Um, all right, so let's go to the actual attribute editor. Um, we'll call this not wave cave walls. Okay, so let's go back here. Um, ha! Let's give it a radius of, I don't know, 30. Um, definitely don't need, let's go 16 subdivisions. Um, make it a little more rounded, um, since you aren't going to really get close to it. Um, God, the rotation is going to be terrible. I have no idea what to do with it. Um, Let's just sort of guess. Not that. That's too much. Nope. 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 That's kind of good. Except it's still terrible. Um, it's because it's. See, see, I got rotation snapping at 15. Aha! There we go. Discrete rotate. So that's how I do probably scaling. Let me see if I can do that. Yep, discrete scale. Okay. Ah! I hate when I'm stupid. Um, so actually, let's zero you out, and then let's just do 10. Holy crap, that can't be it. Um, like, I, it's not, okay. I was saying, like, I cannot believe that. Um, it's actually too much. Eight. Okay, or... That looks about right. All right. We got any aliasing? That's how you can. T and of course, I did not get all held down. Doesn't look like I have any aliasing. Um, okay. Let's go back here. Go back here to perspective. Um, let's go back to our poly cylinder. So this is going to be massive. Uh, Forty-five. I say massive as it's obviously not big enough. Um, um, let's try, actually, uh, it's hard to tell, um, so 45 would probably work, actually, if I just go down by 15, uh, except that that is really nasty and close to it, um, and like I said earlier, I think I'm going to get rid of this centerpiece. So instead of it being one massive pillar, it's going to be a thing sort of held in place by these four columns. Um, ooh, and then I could probably do right there. That, ah, that's later design, Chris. Um, so. I'm going to go 15. Let's go negative 10. Um, yes. 
still have a nice sense of scale. Um, and last thing we want to do is face. And actually, you know what? I don't want to do that. Let me just go to object mode. And then UVs. And then just flip. Oh, wait, no, that's not what I want. So now it's black on the outside, which means that um, all of the faces on the inside are what are going to be shown with textures. Um, so I like that. I like that. Um, let's export this um, and just see see how it looks. Um, this over here, and I'll. I'll organize the uh, actual caves, or the layouts in my uh, outliner a lot more later. Uh, man, my chat keeps going away, because I know how much you guys want to talk to me. Um, okay, so all that stuff's under caves now. Um, let's save, then file, export, selection, caves of FBX. Yes, I want to replace it. And let's go to here. Caves of FBX. Copy the caves. Place the file and destination. And bam. Okay. Um, actually, you know what? That might be too close. Actually, because um, I don't want to have the ceiling feel like it's in on you here. Um, I would like it to be a little higher up. Well, then again, actually, I might have this be closer, um, just because the other three levels that connect to from here um, are meant to be a lot more open air, um, even though they're underground, which I know makes no sense, but you know, just stick with me here. Um, so maybe it would be good to have the caves actually feel a little more claustrophobic and close down on you. Um, so let's see what this looks like. Really? That's interesting. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Well. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, like I said before, there's going to be a light coming out of the ceiling here, so it's close enough that the fog makes it dark, but not so far away that the fog makes it impenetrable. Um, I might have to lessen the fog anyway just because so this is where you'll come in from and well, that's actually not that bad I, I kind of like that that, that, that distance pretty nice actually um, I might be a little too big well I might change the fog a bit and light mapping probably will help actually because um, the big thing is I would like to I'd like to very very slightly be able to see the opposite wall um, when you come in but this might actually work better because you can get this nice sense of uh, scale and you'll be able to see these two uh, entryways before you see the third one which is good because I actually want the uh, even though when you get here you'll be able to go to any of the three levels um, the labyrinth is meant to be a little more difficult um, than the other two, just because it's it's going to have actual like riddles and puzzles, um, as well as having to walk it or, or ha as well as having to navigate a maze, um, which will will be more frustrating than the other two, which are a little more open. Um, so, oh man, <laughs> the light mapping is just completely screwed up because of how the UVs are set up. Um, yeah, I, I kind of like this. Um, I think this is a pretty good stopping point. Um, you know, and if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, um, or if you want to just insult my terrible modeling skills, um, or my terrible, terrible dirt textures, um, all of which are scaled terribly because of the UV mapping um, that hasn't been done yet. But yeah, um, I think this is a pretty good stopping point. Um, 
hopefully I'll be able to get some of the more boring stuff done over the weekend. Um, so next Tuesday when we come back to the, the stream again, um, it will be a little more interesting and I'll be able to show you all uh, some of the progress I've made. Uh, hopefully actually I'll be able to have most of this level done. Um, that way you can see nice fancy light mapping and texturing and all this stuff. Um, but just remember, this is where it all started. A very, very dark room with dirt written everywhere. So... All right, well, um, I think that'll be it for today. Um, thank you for watching. Um, this is Chris, lead developer for TextQuest, and I will see you all.